What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me here today. My name is Jeremy. I'm a motion graphics designer, animator, and 3D hobbyist. This show is an unrehearsed screen recording of my workflow and a peek into my journey to develop a deeper design skill set. Here it's not so much practice makes perfect, but more practice makes progress. This is The Drill. So this week's episode is a special request. I got a message over on Reddit uh, from Matt Jesscap, and Matt was wondering if I could do an episode on this video, Schism, uh, by Simon uh, Fiedler. I'm um, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, there's a link for it below. Um, and specifically what we were talking about is doing this uh, kind of flickering and light movement effect that's inside the video. So I'm actually using the video um, as a reference for this. Uh, again, the video is in the show notes below. Uh, I would recommend checking it out. It's a really cool, really cool animation. Um, and it was a, this was a fun exercise to play around with uh, different light passes. And um, to answer the question that uh, you know I got over there from Matt was, was uh, the way I handled this was with different light ID passes on my Octane lights. Um, I believe this is, you're able to do this natively in Cinema 4D. I don't have uh, a lot of experience doing that, um, mostly because I've been using Octane um, almost exclusively since starting uh, to use Cinema 4D. So I'm sure with a little more research, I could uh, dive into that a little more. But basically what I've done here is set up some soft body spheres to add to the scene a little bit. Uh, in Schism there is a triangle, there's a character touching up against the glass and stuff like that. Um, one way to do that would be to get into Mixamo and, and play with some mocap data to, to use the animation uh, or to do the animation of a character in a more simple way. So you could, you could actually watch some of my other videos to view how to how I pulled that in in the past. Um, but with this, I just I'm, all I'm really doing is using, um, I'm using the, the built-in dynamics of Cinema 4D. Uh, it's a fan, I believe it's called a fan, um, to blow, or I'm sorry, it's wind. I'm using wind to blow the, the spheres toward this glass. And I'm just using glass uh, with some roughness on it. Uh, it's just default specular with some roughness on it right in Octane. And that is um, letting that light spread across the glass. So what I did was um, the important step of this is going into your Octane render passes and changing um, and turning on all the light, the material light ID passes. Uh, I'm sorry, not material light ID passes. They're just light ID passes. And you can do one through eight. So in your Octane light object, you can define what the light pass ID is. So I went through and used eight different uh, eight different area lights in this and labeled them one through eight respectively. And then what I got were, were eight different light passes out of Octane and out of Cinema 4D. So then what I did is I used light pass one on a black solid in After Effects and I just flickered that on with uh, opacity layers so I just got this flicker of the light coming on and you could see um, about 10 frames in where the light or where the layer is split and then there's a loop out animation from 100 to 95 percent uh, looping out so that light you get that fluorescent light flicker look after that then what I did is later on in the timeline I did the same thing for each of those each of those different light ID passes and offset them a little bit. Um, now that I'm looking at this, there are actually more than eight lights, uh, but some of them are on the same light ID number. I believe there are 12 lights and Octane only allows you to go up to eight light ID passes. So this is the light animating from left to right. That's just light ID pass one animating from left to right. And then the rest of them flicker on. Um, and then they all, I've split them all and done a loop out 100 to 95 on the opacity after that. And so you get that Again, that you can see that flickering in the in the details where the the light is. It's as if the shutter the shutter of the camera is is um, picking up the you know the flicker that you would get from that. Um, if you're using you know if you're actually doing photography or, or videography, and you're using LED lights for example, you actually need special LED lights that don't flicker, or else your camera picks that up. So. 
So there you have it for this week's episode. Uh, Matt, I really appreciate uh, you, you sending a request out there, and it was a nice exercise for me to do, um, and I hope it sheds a little light on the question you had. If anybody else has any requests or anything like that, you know, I'll continue to do different episodes each week, but if you have a question, I would love to try to tackle it, and uh, I think just the community talking to each other is, is you know, really is a rewarding process. So if, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me. You know how YouTube works. You can like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Um, if you would like to consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. It keeps the channel moving. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitch at Jeremy underscore Walker. That's J-R-M-Y underscore W-L-K-R. You can visit my website for updates or shoot me an email at Jeremy at JeremyWalker.com. Thank you again so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all next week on The Drill.